All right, everyone. So welcome to class. Um, again, today is December 7th. And today's class, we are going to be talking about a couple different things. Uh, we're going to be talking about uh, different places that you can store information on your computer or externally to your computer. We're going to talk about what is the difference between a hard drive versus the cloud versus the thumb drives. We're going to discuss those couple different ways to store information. And then we're going to talk about moving files. We're going to talk about how you can record, um, you know, a, a video or take pictures. We even record your voice on your computer um, and use that to sometimes help take notes. I know if uh, someone's in school or sometimes you just get like a really good idea and you want to get it out of your brain and get it somewhere where you can just save it and uh, revisit that. It's really nice to be able to use the recording function on your computer and just leave yourself a little voice note and say, hey, self, you know, this is a great idea I had and then you can revisit that. So we're going to look at all those different things today. Uh, should be a really good class. If you guys have any questions as we're going along, feel free to raise your hand or interrupt me. And I would like to answer your questions because uh, I don't want anybody to forget your questions. So we're going to go ahead and get going. I'm going to go ahead and turn off my camera so you guys can focus on my screen share and see what I'm talking about. So here we go. Okay. So the first thing I want to just ask you guys uh, as we get going here is, and th this is a kind of a rhetorical question, but feel free to raise your hand and answer it also. But uh, where do you put papers that you no longer need? Let's say you have an important document like a social security card, a birth certificate, something important. You don't need it all the time, but you do need to keep it somewhere safe. Where do you guys keep those documents physically, a physical document like that? In a safe. In a safe, okay. Uh huh. Anybody use folders, three ring binders, anything like that? Because um, what, what the way that a computer is built is you can do it the same exact way. Um, is when you are saving files on your computer, uh, it works the exact same way. So you can save files into a folder. You can actually put folders inside of folders. And so we'll demonstrate all of that today as we go through the training. Um, where do you keep um, those documents if they're not in a safe, right? And then um, has anyone ever used their uh, computer to take photos of themselves? or videos of themselves? Yes. Great, great. Have you found that to be useful? Yes. Mm -hmm. um, I know one example, and most of you, maybe if you haven't used your computer to do it, who logs on to their bank using your face? Does anybody do that on their phones? So most of the apps these days, right? You put it right in front of you. You can't hear me, Dorcas? You can't hear me? No? Okay. Um, it may be a setting on your computer. Can everyone else hear me okay? Yes. Yes, okay. you can hear me. Dorcas, it might be your volume. You might need to go um, and turn up your volume. It would be, on if I'm not sure if you're on a phone or a computer, but you need to turn up your volume. Um, try the F2. Well, she can't hear me. Um, try turning up your volume. Sorry, y'all. I'm just chatting, um, Dorcas here to let her know what she needs to do to hopefully, um, make it so that she can hear me. She can't hear me right now. Uh, okay. So uh, some of the things we're going to learn today is, again, um, just uh, how to take a photo, how to record a voice memo on your computer, a couple different ways to store things, um, and then we're going to use the recycle bin to remove things. Just one second. Okay. One second, I'm going to just mute here. All right, so here we go. I'm going to go ahead and 
Just move Zoom out of the way a little bit here. And then I'm going to share my screen and we're going to go through how we take photos on our computer. Okay. Share my screen. All right, can you all see my screen? Hopefully you can. Everyone can see my screen? Yes? Yes. Okay, great. I just want to make sure. Okay, so um, the way that we take a photo, so if you're ever on a laptop, um, I'm going to just share and have you guys look at my computer. So I'm just going to take my camera. And by the way, we're at the Mission Africa office right now. So there's Ellie over there. Say hi, Ellie. <laughs> That's Ellie over there. He's helping out uh, and he's talking with Dorcas right now. Uh, but I want to show you guys my laptop. So at the top of the laptop here, um, it may be hard to see. There's a little dot right there. That is the camera. If you're ever on a laptop and you see that little dot at the top, that's going to be your camera. Uh, and it's important to know that um, most cameras have a little shutter button where you can just slide something over it. So that if you don't want people to see you on your camera, you can always slide them over. Um, but it's really not the best camera, uh, but it does an okay job. It's not going to be the best quality camera. As you can tell, I'm using an external camera, which is why I can pick it up and I can move it around and show you guys around the room. So I have an external camera connected to my laptop. It tends to be a little bit higher quality camera um, to take better photos and better video. Uh, so I did want to show that to you guys. So the way that you would um, take a photo is um, you would just come right down here to the bottom. So down here we have in the bottom left, we have a start menu. And anytime you click that start menu, it's going to bring up several options. It has down here at the bottom, it has all of your previous documents that you've um, accessed recently. It also has a bunch of different applications maybe that you've used recently. And then here in the search bar, you can actually search. And I'm going to just search camera. This is a normal application that's on most computers. If you're using a different type of computer, it would also uh, be there. Like if you're using a Mac or something, you can always just go to the search option and search for camera. So I'm just going to click on camera and notice that it now brings up my face. So the camera is right here on my laptop. So I can put my finger literally on it. I do have a little shutter that I can slide to the side. So I'm just going to slide that shutter to the side and notice that it blanks out my camera so that it, again, if for privacy reasons, I don't want people to see me uh, or access my camera, I can just slide that, but I'm going to slide it back now. You can see that now we can see me. I'm here right in front of the camera. Um, I do have an external camera. So um, if I wanted to use my other camera, I could change my camera using this button here in the top right. That button allows me to use an alternate camera if I don't want to just use the standard camera that comes with the laptop. But because I'm using that one right now for Zoom, I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to use the camera that comes with the laptop right here. And the way that you would take a picture is just using this big white button here on the right. Notice that as I move my mouse over to the right on top of that camera button, it says take a photo. Now, it hasn't taken the photo yet. It's not going to activate that until I use my mouse and I actually click that button. As soon as I click that button, just like a normal camera, it's going to take that photo. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm going to go ahead and click take photo. And you saw it take a snap there, right? So now we have a photo taken. I'm going to take a few photos. There we go. So I got a few different photos there. Let's see. Okay. And so now I've taken a photo. You can see that it saved the photo down here in the bottom right. And so to access that photo, because what is the number one thing we always do once we've taken a photo of ourselves? We want to see it and approve it, right? I know my wife, when she takes a photo, 
no photos can be posted until they've been approved by Erica. It's very important. So I'm not allowed to post photos. You got to approve of it because we might look a little weird. Sometimes the photo doesn't quite catch us at our best, right? And we want to go back and we want to <laughs> have a chance to fix that. And so let's see. So I just clicked the photo in the bottom right again. So I'm just going to go back. I'll show you guys what I did. So down here, I'm just going to click on the photo. And here's one of the photos, okay? So I'm just going to make it a little smaller so y'all can see everything that's going on here. And so we have some options. I'll just talk about the options right here at the top. Right here, you have Zoom, right? So it's all the way zoomed out. I can, as I scale this in, note how it will zoom all the way in. We don't want to get too close. Get a little scary there. Don't want to do that. So we'll go back to zoom out. Uh, this option here, is to rotate, right? So if you end up taking a photo and you want to rotate it, you can just hit this rotate button here and it'll rotate it. Okay. Nice feature if you, for one reason or another, want to take a photo that's wider or you take it upside down or something, you have the option to rotate it. Uh, here we have the option to delete it. And then here we have some option for some different filters, which I'm not going to worry too much about today. Uh, bottom line is this is how you would take a photo. And then we have some options over here. Finally, here we have a share button. So let's click that. So it looks like it'll allow me to share it by email. This is very similar on your phone, right? If you have a photo that you've taken, you can normally share it by text or by email. Maybe you can drop it to someone that's in close proximity. And then the last thing over here is see more. And this is what I wanted to show you is we can copy this photo from right here. Anytime you see those two uh, kind of squares on top of each other, that means copy. So what does copy mean? That means that you are going to um, not delete it from its current location, but you can copy it from its current location and then you can place it somewhere else. So then you have two copies of the same thing, just like you would if you had a copy machine and you had five people you wanted to provide this document to, you go to the copy machine, make five copies, and everyone gets a copy of the same document. So the same thing happens here with the copy function is you have the option to copy this. So I'm going to copy it right now. And then I'm going to come to my desktop over here and we'll see if we can paste it. There's the paste option right there. Just going to hit paste. And there's my photo. What do you notice about the photo? Do you notice the title of the photo? It says win for Windows. Then it has an underscore here. 2023. 1207. Does that sound familiar? the year 2023, December 7th. And then it says 18, 18, 32. That means uh, in military time, 6, 18 and 32 seconds is when this photo was taken. So there's a lot of good information in this photo. Let me um, just zoom in a little bit so you guys can see it. Just one second. Just gonna zoom my screen in so you guys can see it a little better. Okay. So da, 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 where did it go? Oh, here it is right here. OK, so here's the photo again right here. Again, notice the title of it. It says when 2023, 1207. So that's the date and the year. And then it says 18, 1832. So that right there already tells you that uh, this photo, the date that it was taken, and it was taken on a Windows computer. Uh, so if I want to get more information on it, I can just right-click it. And let's look for properties. And here's some additional information on the photo. Uh, again, we have the time that it was created just two minutes ago. We have the size of the file, 279 kilobytes, not too big, pretty small. We have some security features, which we won't go through today. 
and then details. So this is the important part that I wanted to show you guys because oftentimes we take photos on our phones or we take photos on our laptops and we post them to social media. I want to caution you about that because people um, that are out there, sometimes there's bad folks that want to steal your information. Um, for instance, if you're going on vacation for Christmas, do you want to post a photo of yourself in front of your house with your bags, your family saying, hey, we're leaving for two weeks. We're going on vacation. We'll be back in two weeks. Do you really want to post that to social media? Because uh, what is that going to tell somebody that may be looking to do bad things, right? Maybe it tells them, hey, this person is not home um, and I could go to their house and rob them. Okay. Well, how do they know where you live at? Well, uh, in the photo that I just took, location services are on. Oftentimes in every photo that you take, there is additional location information. So again, from this photo here that I just took, doesn't seem like a lot. It's just a photo of me in front of my camera. You would think that nobody could tell where I was. But if you right click again, so right click is again, the middle finger on your mouse, not your pointer finger, but your middle finger on your mouse. Um, the It'll right finger, go to properties, and go to details. And then as we scroll down, let's see what we find out. What is this right here? GPS, global positioning. And it has a latitude and a longitude. So using these coordinates right here, if I was again to post this um, onto social media somewhere and someone looked at my photo and they knew how to do what I'm showing you guys right now, they would be able to get the exact location of where that photo was taken. It also has the date and the time that photo was taken. So there's a lot of information inside of this photo that sometimes we aren't aware of. And so I just wanted to point that out that there is um, sometimes gonna be your location information inside of your photo. So once we have this photo here, of course, um, there's a couple ways to store it. Um, uh, first of all, I'm gonna go ahead and change the name because normally we wouldn't leave it just that name. So to change the name, you would just simply move your mouse over the text right under the photo and just click one time on the text. It highlights the entire thing. You don't have to hit delete or backspace. You can just start typing to rename it. I'm just going to type it um, Eric's favorite photo. Okay. And I hit enter and it changes the name. So now we have that, that photo there. So there's a couple things I can do with it. Let's say I just wanted to save it somewhere in my photos because I might want to save it for future reference uh, to put on a resume or to put on my LinkedIn profile or whatever I might want to do with it. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to copy it. So I'm, I just right clicked and I'm going to hit copy. Let's see. Not an option there. So you know what I'm going to do? I'm just going to go here to folders. So this is where we store information on our computer, on our hard drive. So I'm going to click that. And now we're looking at a folder. This is normally where on a PC you would hold all your documents. Um, and so we have a couple options over here. Normally under my documents is where most people are going to start saving their information. So that's right here. Okay. So you can see that I have different folders. I have some folders for family stuff, some things for church, for business, um, some sound recordings, th different things that I've done, et cetera. Uh, but let's save this one under pictures, actually. So I'm going to just click pictures. And this is just a folder called pictures. You can see I have some of my family in here. And so I'm just going to take this photo and I'm just going to click it and I'm going to drag it over into this folder. And then as I release my mouse, it should drop it in there. And there it is, Eric's favorite photo. And now it's under Eric's personal files and then pictures. So it's there now, okay? Notice that it moved off of my desktop and I moved it into this folder. So if I close that folder, it's no longer there, but how do I find it? Again, go back to my file explorer. 
which is again, where I organize all my files on my computer. This would be like having a huge, um, uh, what I want to call it, like a filing cabinet, right? So that would be your My Documents. And within that filing cabinet, you'd have other big folders that have a ton of information. You might have folders for your car, folders for your house, a folder for your family's medical records, finances, et cetera. So same thing here. So I'm going to go back to pictures. And I think I saved it in here. And there it is, Eric's favorite folder right there, Eric's favorite photo. OK, so I'm going to move it back out because I want to show you a second way that we can save. So the second way I want to show you is by saving to the cloud. Uh, so the cloud, what is the cloud? Has anybody here used the cloud before? Has anyone used the cloud before? No one meets today? That's okay. <laughs> I want to show you guys the cloud. So this is another way to store information is uh, on the cloud. If you have a Gmail account, you already have a cloud account. So that's one of the good news is here. Who has a Gmail account? Just put it in the chat or you can unmute and just say, I do. I was curious, how many of you here have a Gmail account? I saw I have one. Okay, thank you. Uh, so I believe most of you probably do have a Gmail account. So if you have a Gmail account, I'm going to show you a really fun trick today. Um, and the advantage of using the cloud over saving things to your hard drive is that when you use the cloud, the document is not physically on your computer. Now the document is on the cloud. So anytime you access your Google account, you could be at the library, you could be at home, you could be on your phone, you could be on your laptop um, somewhere like uh, in Seattle. You could even get on a plane, go to Virginia, get on someone else's laptop, log into your Google account and the document would still be there because it's on the cloud. So it's, the document is not physically located on a personal laptop. It's on the cloud and you can access it anywhere you can access your Google document. So let's show you that one. That This is gonna be really cool. I think most folks that have a Google account don't know um, that when you actually sign up for a Gmail account, you're actually signing up for a Google account, okay? So I'm going to go, you guys can see my email here. And so this is what your email looks like, right? When you log into Gmail, you have all your emails here. And on the left, you have a couple of options. Well, one little trick that a lot of people don't know is right here, there's these nine dots. There's a lot of good stuff in those nine dots. So again, to clarify, when you sign up for a Gmail account, you're actually signing up for a Google account. Gmail is one small part of having a Google account. In addition, when you're signed in, and I know I'm signed in here because it shows my photo for you, it might show your name or your initial over here in the top right. But once you're signed in and you click on these nine dots, it's going to show you all of the other things that are available within your Google account. And again, this is all included. It's all free. You can make a Google form. You can use Google Calendar to organize your calendar. You can do a Google Doc. Docs is very similar to Microsoft Word. Google Sheets is very similar to Microsoft Excel. And Google Slides is very similar to PowerPoint. But the one I want to highlight today is this one. So anytime you see this symbol here that says Drive, this is called Google Drive. This is free cloud storage space that is associated with your Google account only your Google account. So you can save documents, you can save photos, you can save whatever you like to this Google Drive for free um, and have access to your documents anywhere you have access to your Gmail. So because I'm already logged into my Gmail account, which is again, associated with my Google account, all I'm gonna do is just click these nine dots and I'm gonna say, let's open up Google Drive. It opens up a new tab. And in that new tab now, 
uh, it, you can see it now I'm in my drive. So you may not be as familiar with this as Google and that's okay, but I wanna show you how to upload a document. So all we wanna do, just like if you were gonna write a new email, you would go to compose over here. So to upload a document to your Google Cloud Drive, you would just hit new here and do file upload. You can also upload a folder, just so you know, but I'm just gonna do a file and I'm gonna go find that photo that I took. So let's do file upload. Now I'm gonna go to pictures and I'm gonna go down to find that photo that I just took. Where is it? Uh, oh, I moved it back to the desktop, didn't I? Let's see. Here it is, Eric's favorite photo. Okay, so I click it and then I just simply hit open. And say and see here it said starting to upload. Then it said one upload complete. And now the photo, Eric's favorite photo, is now in my Google Drive. So now anytime I want to access that photo, and again, this applies to documents, this applies to presentations, uh, whatever you want it to apply to, you can upload documents to your cloud drive. So I just want to show you that one more time. I know that was a little quick. So from your Gmail, once you're logged into your Gmail, you would just simply click on the Google Apps button here, find Google Drive, click it. It's going to bring you here. And then from here, you can simply click on New and you can upload a file or a folder. Uh, obviously, you have to know where the document is on your computer. Um, the easiest place, uh, if you're still getting familiar with your computer, the easiest place to save documents may be on your desktop. Uh, so you can completely save documents to your desktop. That's completely fine. And you can upload them from there. Um, as you get more advanced in your training, you can definitely start to use folders and organize yourself. Uh, that's what I would recommend. But for the time being, if you're just now getting familiar with your, um, you know, your folders and so forth, save things to your desktop, and then you can just upload here one file, or you can upload an entire folder from here. So if I wanted to upload this entire folder, I would click that, hit upload. It would upload that entire folder, including all of the documents that are inside of that folder. I'm going to pause for a second. Are there any questions? Go to the chat. Let's see. Okay. Let's see here. Are there any questions? Any questions so far? Dorcas, were you able to hear me eventually? Okay, Margaret said no questions. Um, I see someone has a question. Oh, okay, you were just saying you had a Gmail account. Okay, great. So we're good to go. Okay, let's go back. Margaret has a question. Okay, Margaret, you had a question? No, okay. Okay, perfect. All right, so to review, let's um, go and look. I just have a couple questions for y'all and let's see how we're doing. Just give me a second, pull this over. Okay. Okay, here we go. And I'm gonna share screen one. Please let me know when you guys can see my screen. Okay, looks like y'all can see my screen now. Okay, so to review, when you see this, 
with well, what's on my screen here, what does that tell you? We talked about this. This is one of the ways to store information. What do we call this one? Anytime you see this symbol down here, it also is called this. What do we call that? Anybody feel free to unmute. Mm -hmm. Cloud. The cloud. cloud. And what does the cloud? Cloud. what does the cloud do? What does the cloud do? It stores information. It stores information. If you have a Gmail account, do you have a free Google uh, Cloud account, a Google Drive account? Yes. Yes, you do. Yes, you do. Uh, I would encourage you to use it, you guys. It's free. It's included in your account. I think you can probably save, um, you know, something like uh, 30 or 40 gigabytes in there, which is quite a bit of information. You could do some pretty long videos and things like that um, if that's something that you were interested in. Okay. All right. Let's see. Go, going down here. This is another type of storage device that we call a thumb drive. Um some of you may have used a thumb drive. This is a very useful tool um, because you can actually, it's a physical item that you can just plug into your computer. Many of you have probably used this um, and you can store information directly on this thumb drive. One of the drawbacks of having a thumb drive is that you can lose it, right? Um, so you could have a lot of your documents on there and you can lose it. And if you lose it, those documents are gone. So I don't recommend thumb drives. These used to be pretty good and very helpful. Um, what I found is, though, if you lose it because it is small, they tend to be like black, so they can kind of blend in. If you lose it or drop it in your purse or somewhere in your backpack, it can be a little bit hard to find. Uh, they are pretty cheap. So that is one of the advantages. They're pretty cheap and easy to get, um, and they can store a lot of information. But the drawback, again, is you could lose it. So, again, it's another type of a storage device. There's a couple names. Some people call it a USB drive. Others may refer to it as a thumb drive. Okay. And then this one, anytime you see this on your computer, what do we call this? This is the storage that's on your computer. So if you save a document onto your computer, what do we call that drive? Normally on your laptop, if you have a PC, we call it the local drive. Uh, anybody know what we call the drive that holds your information on your computer? We call it the hard drive, the hard drive, okay? So we have three different types of storage devices that typically most people use. You have your hard drive, which is your uh, storage directly on your computer. We have your thumb drive, which is like an external storage device that you can plug in. You can take with you to your office. You can take it to the library, someone else's home. So there's a lot of options on where to take it to. And then lastly, there is the cloud and Google Drive. Um, now, again, Google Drive is only one of the clouds. It's one of the most popular ones, though, because most people already have a Gmail account. So that means they already have access to their Google Drive. And then the last thing I wanted to show you all is um, the trash. And we haven't trained on this one yet. So let me just show you how this works. Um, so the recycle bin or the trash. So I noticed mine is right here. So mine is over here. I have a recycle bin, okay? The recycle bin is where documents go when you uh, delete them. So it's very much like if you were to have a document and you were working on it and you decide, you know what? I don't need this document anymore. It's old and I don't want to get it confused with my good documents. I want to delete this document. So if you want to do that, let me just grab a document I want to get rid of really quick. Let me grab one. Okay. I'm just going to use this one that I'm just about to paste. Okay. So let's say I have this photo here. This Eric's 
uh, photo and I want to delete this photo. I don't want it on my computer anymore um, because I have another one that I like. So there's a couple ways to get rid of it. You can just click and move it over into the recycle bin. Um, the other way to do it is you can right click it and you can just hit delete. You can hit the little trash button there. When you hit that delete button, it's very much like taking things out to your trash. Just because you put something in the trash at your house or you put it in the recycle bin at your house does not mean that it's actually gone. It's still at your house for maybe three or four more days, depending on when the trash man comes. So I'm going to hit delete. That document is gone now, but it's not completely gone. It's just moved to the recycle bin. So now I'm going to go ahead and click on recycle bin. And let's look and see what's in there. Oh, I have a couple documents. So again, this would be just like if you, you know, and I've been guilty of this. I told this story the other day. I have thrown out my daughter's homework. You know, my daughter, she'll sometimes put her homework on the kitchen table and I'm cleaning up and I'm like, I don't know what this random piece of paper is. I'm throwing this out. It's going in the trash. I throw it in the trash and, and almost guaranteed the next morning when she's getting ready to go to school. Where's this paper that I had that was sitting on the kitchen table? And I'm like, oh, I know where it is. It's in the recycle bin. Dad threw it away. Um, and so we'll go in the recycle bin and get it out. So same thing here. When you delete anything on your PC or your computer, it's not actually deleted. It just goes to the recycle bin. And it sits here normally for about 30 days. Um, and if you don't get rid of it, it will automatically uh, delete it just to free up disk space. But also, um, you can come here from time to time. So notice that I have these two documents here. Both of these items were deleted today, December 7th. So if I was very, very sure that I never needed this document again, that I could go to empty recycle bin right here, click that, and it gives me a warning. Are you sure you want to permanently delete these two items? Now, it's asking me that because it wants to make sure that if I delete this, I'm not gonna look for it. So I'm gonna hit yes. And now those items are gone. So essentially the trash man has come, he's taken out the trash. There's no more trash in the bin. It's clean and it's ready for next week. So that takes us back to this. So that's what this is. And so anytime you see this on your computer, this is your recycle bin uh, where documents live temporarily after you have deleted them until the trash is taken out. Any questions on that? No, thank you. You're welcome. Okay. Let me see what else we've got here. Okay, the last thing I'll share with you all um, today is how to do a recorded um, of, of your voice. So let's say you wanted to record just a quick voice memo to yourself. I'm um, just going to go back here and share my screen again. So again, if you wanted to record your voice to your computer, very similar to the way that we took the photo earlier, uh, you would just come down here to the start menu. If you have a search bar, you don't even have to go to the start menu. You could just go here and just type in voice recorder. Note that it brings up the voice sound recorder app. Just going to go ahead and click on that, and it's going to open up that app. And, and apps work on your computer the same way that they work on your uh, phone, right? So you just click the app. It opens up. Uh, obviously, we can see right here we have a big record button. I'm just going to do a quick recording. Let's see if it works because I'm also using the audio for this meeting, but uh, we'll see if it works. Um, yeah, it looks like it's not working because I'm using the audio right now for this meeting. One second. Okay, now let's see. Okay, so now it's starting to record. So notice that as I am talking, it is showing 
the audio as I'm starting to record it. So pay self, make sure that you get cheeseburgers at the grocery store today. End of recording. And I'm going to hit stop. And notice that it uh, puts it up right up here, recording number three, today's date at 648. We can verify the time right now is 648 p.m. So here's the recording. I'm just going to click it. I'm going to right click it. What are my options here? So I can share it. I can rename it or I can show it in the folder. I want to rename it shopping list. Hit enter. Oh, didn't like that. Rename. Okay, there we go. So we, we called it shopping list is there. But where where is the file if I wanted to, I don't know, let's say you wanted to email this to someone or you wanted to save it somewhere else or you just want to know where it's at. You can just again right click and do show in folder. That's going to show you where the file is on your computer. So show in folder. And then it opens up and then it opens up here. And notice that we have shopping list right here. So this is the recording that I just took. Um, if we go here, let's see if we can view some details. I just wanna... mm -hmm. So again, if I right click shopping list and I go to properties, it shows me that this was recorded on Thursday, December 7th at 6.48 p.m. And now I have my file. So again, if I wanted to move my file to the desktop, I would just be able to click hold and move it over to the desktop or I can drop it. So that moved it from the folder to my desktop. So I can now close the folder. This is on my desktop. Let's say I'm done with it. I can now move it to the recycle bin. Now my recycle bin is showing that it has something in it. Open up the recycle bin. And then I can empty recycle bin. It's going to ask if I want to permanently delete. Because remember, using the recycle bin, anytime you delete from there, it is going to be permanently deleted. I'm going to go ahead and hit yes. And it's all done. All right, everyone. Uh, it's 6.51. Uh, I like to leave the last 10 minutes or so of class for Q&A. Um, I would like to open it up at this time for some Q&A. Does anybody have any questions for me? And it doesn't have to necessarily even be about this lesson. It could be about anything. Um, so now would be the time. Anybody have any questions? I'm waiting. <laughs> For those of you who um, this is your first time attending. Yes, it's my first time. Yes, welcome, welcome, welcome. How'd you find out about us? Yeah, I, I don't know too much English, but I try to understand what you say. Do you need Spanish translation? Uh, I think it's fine. Okay. But, but my wife needs needs translation. <laughs> okay. Okay. Uh, yeah. So let me show you something. Uh, let me share my screen here. So one thing you can do to get translation um, in at least the text at the bottom. So you see how at the bottom of my screen, I'm getting the Spanish uh, translation. Can you see that? Uh, no, no, no. Let's see. Okay, I'll show you here. So um, if you go to more, can you more. see me clicking on more? So on, on Zoom, if you click on more, no. and then click on captions, and then there's an option to choose my caption language, and you can choose Spanish. So as I'm speaking, you will get text at the bottom of your screen that translates what I'm saying live. Were you able to find that?
Okay, it looks like Ellie raised a hand. Uh, I'm not sure if they found that. Uh, yeah. Go ahead, Ellie. Yeah, Eric, I noticed that uh, Dorcas was struggling with uh, connecting to Zoom, and then she's like the second person struggling with Zoom. So I was trying to suggest that we have like a small uh, Zoom <laughs> training. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that was my suggestion. For sure. Yes, I noticed that you. last week, too. I yeah, noticed that you. last week, yeah. too. We had some people yeah, struggling. that had some struggle. Like, they can get on, but it seems to be the connecting yeah. audio, right? Yeah, definitely. Um, we'll, we'll take the uh, first 15 or 20 minutes next class to just do some orientation to Zoom. Make sure everybody's good to go. Yeah, thank you for that. Appreciate it, Ellie. Yep. 